Welcome to the Moonflower Path Podcast. This space is for the highly sensitive, the creatives, the earth loving, the caregivers, the weirdos, the feelers, the change makers, and dreamers of the world. Here, we are all about guiding you to trust your body intuition so you can find home and shift culture. Through the exploration of somatic practice, self-care, and seasonal ritual, my hope is that you will be inspired to be in harmony with yourself and in a dance with the earth. I'm your host, Carolyn, and I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you today. Hello, lovely, and welcome back to the podcast. If it is your first time here, welcome. So lovely to have you here with me. (laughs) I could say with us, but it's just me and you. And if it's not your first time here, welcome back. Um, I feel very honored, as always, that I get to spend a little bit of time with you and that you've chosen to listen to my words. So today's episode is exploring the very like tip of the iceberg that is abundance that is the embodiment that is the lesson that is the theme of abundance it's that time of year again when we move towards the summer solstice so the summer solstice also known as litha is on june 21st and this episode is coming out at the very and I'm trying to see, look at my calendar here. So this episode comes out on May 31st. And so in just less than a month, the summer solstice is upon us, which is the beginning of summer. Um, but it's also the marking of the halfway point of the cycle, the peak, the height of the seasons before our ascension back down to the earth, the slowing down, the retreating to come. So if we take a look at the wheel of the year, The summer solstice is at the top, (laughs) at the very top, and it's the halfway point. And if we associate the wheel of the year with the cycle of the moon, the summer solstice would be associated with the full moon. The thing that I love about the summer solstice is that although it marks the longest day of the year, it also marks the beginning of the shortening of the days. Don't get me wrong, the days will still remain long for a while. They will remain longer than the night even for the entire summer, but they are beginning to shorten, which creates this fascinating paradox that asks of us for deep gratitude, a reverence, respect, and humbling love for all that the sun provides as he takes up space, shines his light, and sings his last hurrah for the entire season. Because there's a certain sense of this is going to end eventually, so how can I appreciate it fully once it's here? Which brings us to the embodied theme of this seasonal transition, abundance. So let's explore abundance as best as we can in today's episode. And again, like I said in the intro, or like I said earlier, this is really just the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg. In the Moonflower Path community space, we are exploring abundance for an entire month. So this episode serves as a very brief and short introduction as a way of offering you the invitation. In what ways might you use the seasonal transition that is coming upon us as a way of looking towards how you might bring in more abundance into your life? So let's get into it. So right away, I ask, we start off, this is a podcast that is about somatic, somatics in all of its forms, somatic self-care of putting the body first. Right away, what do you notice in your body when I mention the word abundance? I'm staying quiet so that you can take a moment to check in. Does it feel like a word that invites in lightness, openness, security? Or does it feel stifling, uncomfortable, tight? Or does it feel kind of neutral, unknown even, maybe even foreign? And in what parts of your body Do you notice those sensations, those feelings? You might not even have words for it. 
And if you don't know, that's okay too. Really resisting the urge to want to know the why behind those feelings or what those feelings even are and letting yourself simply notice them with curiosity and compassion because really that's what we're here for, right? It's not about finding very specific answers. It's not about untangling it all within one moment. It's about slowly and surely getting curious about these concepts and these lessons. So words that you might associate with abundance and there's a long list and this is pulled from my own my own thinking and my own experience as well as from other teachers that I I practice with that I learn from and this is an extensive list and you might even add some other words in your experience and I'll be really honest like I'm still exploring what abundance means and looks like for me and if I'm at a point where I feel like I'm fully worthy of abundance and what does abundance mean in terms of does it look like me just wanting more just for the sake of more am I allowed to want more am I allowed to feel like what I have is enough it's all of these things right it gets really entangled and so these are some these are some ingredients that are found within the concept within the practice of abundance self-worth a strong connection to intuition, gratitude, reciprocity, ease, belief, trust, awareness of your needs, ability to get your needs met, pleasure, resourcefulness, feeling fulfilled, feeling nourished, feeling enough, the art of receiving, and the ability to be with discomfort. Because this is, a, this is a nuanced conversation. It's a vast conversation. It's a deep and wide concept that's entangled with our own beliefs, with our own learnt beliefs, with our societal beliefs, with our cultural beliefs. So there's absolutely the ability to be uncomfortable when we explore our own relationship with abundance that plays into this. Abundance is such a wide topic, which is why we're dedicating an entire month within the membership to dive into it and explore what comes up to the surface. So if you're looking to explore a lot more around what abundance looks like and feels like for you and ways that you can play with this concept of abundance, then we'd love to have you within the community space. All of the details and how to join are found in the show notes. But we're going to be exploring topics like letting yourself receive, the balance and relational act of reciprocity, practicing gratitude as an antidote to scarcity, letting pleasure guide your worthiness in wanting, and all the ways we convince ourselves we don't have enough and in turn aren't enough. This is a vulnerable and uncomfortable journey because it asks of us to unlearn a lot of the ways capitalism and patriarchy have convinced us that there is never enough, that we aren't enough, and ultimately that abundance isn't even possible unless you take, hoard, and extract. It's a weird journey to realize that much of what we've been made to believe is false, that capitalism is quite literally extractive and thrives on scarcity. That thought that there isn't enough to go around and that in order to have and receive that we must take. Because shame is directly linked to scarcity. And when you feel shameful, you are easier to control. Right? So abundance pushes against that idea. Abundance is, for the sake of sounding melodramatic, abundance can quite possibly be a sense of liberation. That there is enough to go around for everyone. But it all comes back to turning to and learning from the natural world to see how freely and lovingly the earth gives. You can't ignore the inherent abundance of the earth when you open your eyes up to it. And you also can't ignore the fundamental need for reciprocity and gratitude within that framework. In order to harvest from a plant, it asks of you to create a relationship with it, to nurture it, to care for it, to get to know it, depending on the circumstance, whether it be in the wild or whether it be in your garden. 
Yet the relationship that Western society has with nature is that we take out of fear that we don't already have enough. And what would happen if we shifted to, I am worthy of receiving because we know there is enough. Not only enough, but that there is more than enough. Abundance quite literally means having more than enough. Not in a way where we hold on to it, stifling it. We hold with a loose grasp, gentle fingers, trusting that more will always come because I am worthy of receiving goodness. Abundance doesn't only mean money. That is one of the things that I really wanted to like focus in on, um, or not focus in on, but really like drive home is especially like in the online business world, if you're familiar with the online business world, um, abundance quite often is used synonymously with money. So attracting abundance is synonymous with attracting money. And that's not really what I'm here to explore um, because I don't have experience in teaching that. What I have experience in guiding folks through our embodied practices. And so exploring more so what does abundance feel like in your body and how might we play around with inviting that feeling in more if that's a feeling that feels really good and nourishing. So maybe there are other areas in your life that you're desiring more abundance. Yes, maybe it's financially, but it might also be abundance of love, abundance of creativity, abundance of connection, abundance of energy, abundance of joy, or abundance of time, right? Desiring more time, not because we should, right? Getting curious about like, well, what are the shoulds? What are the beliefs around like, well, why do I want more time? Is it because I want to like produce more and I want to pound more things out? Or is it because I want more time for things that bring me joy, which then invite in an abundance of joy, right? So it's, it's just getting curious about those desires, um, not out of judgment, but just out of curiosity, So what would it look like, feel like in your body to feel more abundant in whatever area you're desiring more abundance? Imagining the possibility, letting yourself imagine and dream what that could look like. When you imagine it, in what ways does your body shift in its feelings? Like how does the imagining of that abundance, how does that actually affect your body in that moment when you're dreaming and thinking of it? And maybe that's where we start. That lightness or openness or grounding or love or trust or security, that's what embodying abundance can look like and can allow for more to continue to flow to you. That it turns into an abundance that then invites in the ability to take action, so on and so forth. So this brings me back to the sun, to the full moon of the wheel of the year, the peak of the year. A full moon is often associated with abundance of all things, emotions, sensations, energy, magic, passion, and pleasure. So we turn to the heightened energy that will come from the beginning of summer, the abundance of natural wonder around us at this time, and we get curious. How might I practice deep gratitude for what I have to lead towards that feeling rippling into all aspects of my life? How might I embody abundance. So that's your invitation for the next month. If you are so inclined to follow along the same theme, the same exploration, like I mentioned, if you're interested in really diving deep into this and you're not a Moonflower member, we would love to have you. Oh my goodness. There are so many wonderful resources that are part of this space. I've got lots of really cozy stuff that is being released in a couple of days Um, lots of fun sequences, lots of fun playlists, and lots of really supportive self-care supports for when you're feeling an abundance of energy, when you're feeling a lack of abundance of energy, or when you're feeling an overabundance and you want to navigate all of that. Because especially as highly sensitive folk, the summertime, while it can feel really joyful, really abundant, really great, really awesome, really hopeful, all those good things, it can sometimes also feel overstimulating, like too much. And those are some of the supports that I'm also going to be offering folks. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about in next week's episode. So wishing you a very abundant rest of your week. 
Thank you for listening to my words. I hope that it lights something up inside of you and we will talk again very soon. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Moonflower Path Podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn, and ways that you can find more support from me and this cozy community are all found in the show notes. Please consider rating, reviewing, and sharing this podcast with a friend. Those are the best ways to show your support for this free and accessible resource. Wishing you a gentle rest of your day, and I look forward to connecting again with you very soon.